Now, I don't want to get you off on a tangent here, which I'm a, a little bit worried I might do, but there's a lot of people that say fruit is good for us because it contains natural sugars, right? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously we've crossbred this stuff for 12,000 mm -hmm. years roughly now to the point where it's incredibly sweet. You know, modern fruit in comparison to the, the fruit that we used to see, you know, if you put them side by side, you wouldn't even recognize them. They'd look like different plants. Mm -hmm. What would you say to people who advocate for fruit in the diet? You're wrong. Sorry. Fruit is not required by human beings. There is nothing in fruit that you require that you can't get from meat and animal fat in the level that you require it as a human being. Your physiology is absolutely designed by natural selection pressures for something like four and a half million years at least to be an obligate hypercarnivore. Fruit contains a lot of sugar which is unnecessary in the human diet. Most of the sugar in fruit, as you've already correctly said, Max, is put there by people in the first place by selectively breeding those fruits to be sweeter than they were designed by nature. Putting the word natural in front of something is a great marketing ploy, but it's got nothing to do with science. It also informs us in no way on whether something is good for you or not. I can promise you absolutely that putting sugar into your body either in the form of sugar or in the form of complex carbohydrates that break down to sugar, I can promise you that is a bad idea long-term for your health. That I'm absolutely certain of based on my quite significant understandings of human physiology. You should not put sugar into your body for the most part, most people at all. Mm -hmm. Fructose is the worst sugar. Fructose is fruit sugar, by the way. Uh, fructose is the worst kind of sugar you can put in. It's seven to 11 times more damaging to your body than is glucose. Hmm. Now, as also, you... for, for, I was just going to say one more thing, sorry. That's also, good. fructose will drag your cellular energy stores down rather than build them up, causing you to overeat and be inflamed, both of which are bad things. Right, go. Sorry, Max. Hmm. Um, you have this idea of the Randall cycle, you know, uh, which you, you go back and forth with a few people yep. online about. Can you mm. explain in as simple terms as possible mm. you know, sort of how the what the Randall cycle is and why it is a problem to co-ingest carbohydrates and fats? You bet. Right. Best analogy I can come up with that is accessible to the average person, I think. Imagine a heavy freight train. And it's chugging along the tracks at a certain pace, whatever that pace is. If you want to stop that train and then move it back the other direction from where it just came from, you have to overcome its inertia. Well, first of all, you have to overcome its momentum to bring it to a halt. And then you have to apply another force to overcome its inertia again and move it back the other direction and get it going the other way. That is basically what the situation is in the human metabolic pathway with regard to carbohydrates and fats. Think of carbohydrate burning or oxidizing as the train moving in one direction and think of fat burning or fat oxidation as the train moving in the other direction. You can't do both at once. You can't move both. You know, it's there is a cross inhibition. There is a cross competition for entry into the metabolic pathway a cell will prefer to continue burning that which it is burning or oxidizing that which it is oxidizing it's hard to get it to change direction and do something different so if you then offer a bunch of sugar a cell that's using plenty of fat doesn't want to use the sugar and so it will block the sugar out a cell that is currently pouring sugar through and using that for energy will block out fat. If you offer up a cell by means of what you put into your blood after you eat, if you offer up both fats and carbohydrates at the same time, to use another analogy, now we have two fat men both trying to push their way through a revolving door at once. Now nothing can get through. I'm talking the extreme situation where the Randall cycle is fully activated in a cell. Okay, 
This is an oversimplification, folks that understand this. Don't come at me, I know. It's an oversimplification. But basically, that's the that's the take home. Mm -hmm. So a diet that's rich in fat and poor in carbohydrate is fine as regards this issue. A fat which is high in carbohydrate and poor in fat is also fine as regards the Randall cycle issue standalone. The problem is when the Randall cycle is fully activated and nothing can get through and the cell is all jammed up, that will cause inflammation. Mm -hmm. Has to. Because of phosphate groups. For those that want to understand the mechanism that know a little bit of biochemistry, well, how? Phosphate groups, okay? So that's to be avoided. We mm -hmm. do not want to cause chronic systemic inflammation by jamming our cells up, making them unable to use the metabolic pathway to provide energy for themselves. So then we can say, well, okay, what kind of diet is rich in carbohydrate but poor in fat? Well, that's a plant-based diet, isn't it? Or what kind of diet is rich in fat but poor in carbohydrates? Oh, that's an animal-based diet, isn't it? A mixed diet is the worst possible kind of diet you can eat in terms of the inflammation issue. Mm -hmm. So pick either one of those diets and you'll fix that one up. However, here's a caveat. One of those diets is full, complete, and replete with everything you need as a human being to live long and healthy and prosper. And one of them is a diet that's destitute in terms of nutrients required by human beings on an ongoing basis and will cause you a catastrophic health failure probably within about five years, if not sooner. Guess which one's which? I would speculate the, the carnivore diet's the good one. That's right, it is. And the plant-based diet is absolutely the most destitute diet in terms of nutrient requirement that you could possibly consume as a human being. Mm -hmm. So this these carbohydrates that cannot get into the cells, mm -hmm. they, they then become inflammatory to us. Well, first of all, they cause damage to the structures in your body by, it's called glycation. I know it's a term you didn't want to hear, but there it is. It's the joining of sugar chemically with protein structures of your body. Mm -hmm. It messes up their function. It changes their shape. It changes the way they work. It's not good. It's one of the things that contributes to aging and disrepair. It's really, really bad to be damaged by sugar. It's very, very toxic. That's why we don't have much of it in our bloodstream naturally. And that's why we shouldn't be pouring it in there in any amount, let alone hundreds of grams a day. Um, so first of all, it does that. Second of all, because your body can't use it, it then has to be stored again for use later. So then it gets transmuted into fat, which then sits on your body as fat. And if you still keep eating carbohydrates, which you still can't use because you still haven't sorted out the problem that caused that in the first place, not that you should, then you'll just get fatter and fatter and sicker and sicker and more and more diabetic. And then they'll start cutting limbs off. Sorry to be so graphic, but that's what happens. Mm -hmm. When actually the solution to the whole problem here is don't eat carbohydrates. You don't need them, ever. If you're enjoying this interview and you want to see more carnivore-related content like this, consider subscribing down below.